Hey, today we're gonna to talk about koi food, pond liner, and calculating rock for your pond. First question is from a YouTube guy, Pedro Marquez. I believe that's Marquez. Yes, it's Marquez. How you doing, Pedro? It's a good question. He wants to know, what's the best koi food to use and how much would you feed and how often? Since, since we're getting uh, so many questions globally, I'm gonna take, I'm not gonna give you a specific brand of fish food that you should be feeding your fish because I want this to go global. I want everyone to know what to do and what to look for. Uh, first off, I wanna tell you, I, I think you wanna look at the ingredients. You wanna make sure it's limited on fillers. Fillers is really what's bad for fish and you give them bad confirmation, you get them all, you know, it looks like they have a beer gut on them. You know, you don't want that. You're looking for cornmeal, corn flour, wheat starch. You don't want those kind of fillers. You're gonna be looking for uh, fish meal, white fish meal. You're gonna be looking for things of that nature that have, you know, good quality stuff. So you don't wanna stay away from fillers. I think variety is real good. I think some people get stuck in, you know, just getting one kind of fish food and we have, we have such a habit. We get the same kind of mayonnaise or the same kind of mustard and just do the same thing for years and years. Get the koi some variety and switch it up a little bit, especially seasonally, that's very important. You wanna feed a higher protein in the, um, in the summer, you wanna feed something with more carbohydrates, and when, and when the season's changing, go to cold weather. Uh, one thing I think you need to know is as your koi mature, they don't need quite as much protein as in their beginning stages in the first three to five years. They're growing very rapidly, so you wanna give them good heavy proteins in the, um, in the feeding months. And uh, as they get older, you don't need to feed them quite as high of that protein so as in their beginning stages. So I think variety is very important. I think that um, you know if you're buying big bulk bags, a lot of times people leave the bulk bags out where it gets hot. I would keep it in a cool temperature. If you get a big bulk bag of fish food, uh, you might throw it in the freezer even. You know, get, get a smaller portion that you're gonna use to feed the fish. I think that if you are, have a clear bag. You know, if you see, if you can get to the bag of food and it's clear and the light's penetrating through, it's starting to strip the vitamin C's and all the good qualities of the food already. So I think a, a good way is you want a sealed bag or a sealed top container. So when your food is sitting out there by the koi pond, it doesn't start to degrade. And um, I think that's the, about the best thing I can give you. Another thing is, of course, if you can feed them watermelon, uh, if you can feed them some types of, of things like that every now and then, uh, I think that's a really good thing to do and kind of gives them a little variety. I also like to feed like a freeze-dried freeze plankton or a freeze-dried krill. It's something interesting to throw out there. So just spice it up and give them some variety, okay? So just check the ingredients and that's gonna be the best thing I can, I can tell you to do. I'm gonna move on to uh, the second question is about pond liner. It comes from an Xavier A. Hunt off of YouTube and he wants to know what kind of pond liner we use. Uh, he's used some stuff that's not very flexible and he's just, he's just kind of curious on what we use. 90%, I'd probably say 95% of the time, the, the rubber liner we're using is a 45 mil EPDM rubber. It's very pliable. It conforms easily to the, the landscape, I mean, as our excavation. There's a 60 mil liner that we can get. It's really hard to work with. When we go to put it into the pond, it doesn't conform to the shapes and it doesn't give us much more strength. So it's not like I'm gaining anything to go through that extra hard work to, to make, it, make it work. If we're using really large, um, doing really large pond installations, say a quarter acre, half acre, you know, one acre ponds, we're either using a 45 mil rubber liner and that only comes in 50 by 200 foot rolls as big as I can get it. So we, on large installations, we would be doing very large seams in the field. We can use one single piece liners up to 60,000 square feet. So, I mean, over an acre, it's a very big one piece of liner. Uh, it's usually a 20 mil, there's a 30 mil, and there's, um, you know, there's different, there's different mills for us to use on those kind of larger projects. But it's a very different application. Most of the time, we're gonna use that 
good old good quality 45 mil EPDM rubber liner so we can conform to whatever shape we're digging. So I hope that answers your question. I'm not sure where you're from, but uh, you did mention a brand that you should be able to get the 45 mil liner from. So um, be curious to let me know where you're from because I don't know. I know some people in different countries are having problems getting some of the resources that we have here in America. So I, I really want to kind of help overcome those things. So give me some feedback on that, Xavier, okay? I'm gonna move on to the last question of the day from uh, TJ James. And uh, he has a question. We haven't had this one asked yet on the, uh, on, during the show, but it's a, he wants to know how to calculate the rock first pond. He's having a hard time figuring that out. And um, I'm surprised someone hasn't answered that question, asked that question already. Let me give you some feedback on this. If, if uh, I would first suggest talking to your local rock yard and finding out what rock they're using or all the pond guys are using in that area. And then you can, give some, you can get some feedback on that stone from the rock yard. Let me give you an example. Uh, a ton of rock should be able to go say 20 or 30 feet if you have a ton of 12 inch rocks. You know, they're graded, every rock is 12 inch. We're not doing it that way, but they'll tell you 12 inch rock, one ton can go you know, 30 feet or 40 feet or 25 feet. It depends on the density of the stone that you're dealing with. Now we are installing a granite rock where we're at. It's very heavy and dense rock. And um, so some of the formulas we use, let's go into an ecosystem pond. We would use, I have a formula, uh, link times width divided by 65. And that would give you a formula for say an 18 to 24 inch deep pond. So, you know, 11 by 16, you know, times that divided by 65 and it'll give you answers. I have a rock formula sheet right here that we've used for years. And uh, we use this for estimating 11, 11 by pond, two tons of boulders, a ton of gravel, three quarter inch, um, I mean, three quarter ton for waterfall. So we, we have a formula right here already. If you want TJ, you can uh, send me a private message, uh, give me your email address and, and I'll, I'll just send this right to you. So that might help shorten your time. But let me give you a couple more tips of advice on that. If you go to your rock yard, you ask them how far a ton of rock's gonna go. And they'll tell you a two foot rock, one ton will go this far. A one foot rock, one ton will go this far. And they'll give you, they'll give you the links. So you can, you can actually get your pond dug. You can measure the shelves. If it's one shelf, if it's 100 feet around, or let's, let's be more realistic. If it's you know, 30 feet in, in circumference, or, and then you go down to the next one, maybe the inner shelf down there is only 18 feet, then you can tell them you have 48 linear feet, and then they can tell you exactly how much rock you want to use. So that's a, um, a very pre precise way to go. And I would always order a little bit more rock than you need so you have some stuff to choose from. If you're doing a dedicated koi pond using coping stones around the top, you know, a lot of times uh, we're looking for like these big 18 to 24 inch, 36 inch coping stones. It's very easy to just measure the, the length, uh, the linear footage of, uh, around the pond and then you get that many rocks. If you have a 50 foot run, you need 25 two foot rocks and get a few extras so you have some stuff to choose from. So it's a great question and once again, if you want me to email this to you, just send me a, a private message on YouTube and I'll get this emailed over to you and hopefully make this thing go a lot faster for you. So the question of the day, I'm gonna ask you, since this is a global forum, I wanna know what koi food you're using. Give me some name brands, because some of the stuff that's, that they're using in the UK that we'd love to use over here in the US, we just can't get it um, brought over to us. We're having problem doing with importation. So um, there's some stuff that we can get from Japan. Just give me your specific brand that you're using. And I wanna know from Sweden to India to California, tell me what fish food you're using right down here in the comments. And until next time, I'm Eric Triplet the Pond Digger, and I hope you dig ponds as much as I do. Mm -hmm.